excited about today's field trip. Stuart, you are gonna love this. This is a real jewel in Oklahoma City, and I am happy to say that it is literally maybe three minutes from my house. I love it as a retail outlet for all sorts of plants. You guys are always asking me about my pots, my containers. I'm gonna show you some of those. Um, I'm gonna talk about what kind of services Calverts provides, and that's where I am today. I'm at Calverts, which is kind of a, kind of an interior plantscaping business. Now, let me tell you about the history of this, which I just find fascinating. This is in an area of Oklahoma City. It's off of Classen called the Bell Isle District. District. It's near a big Walmart and a Chili's and things like that, but it's in this shady, little haven of an area that is just right off of Classen Avenue. And what I love about it is its history. Well, I love many things about it, but one of the things that fascinates me so is its history. So long ago, this started at the turn of the century in the 1900s as a greenhouse. It was called Ray's Greenhouse. And Stuart, the little bungalow behind you which I believe now is an office, but that's where the owners lived, in this little bungalow. Now, Stuart, you'll find this interesting. People would have gotten to this greenhouse and later to this shop by coming on the old, old trolley that used to run down Classen Avenue. Did you know there was a trolley that used to come down Classen Avenue from downtown? to out here, which was at that time kind of considered the suburbs, I guess, my, my neighborhood in Crown Heights. And so it is such a charming, romantic notion to think of them riding the trolley out to a greenhouse. Then in, oh, about the 70s, they started going into more interior scaping and plants and containers and things of that nature. And they do that today for both commercial, for residential. They have just a huge thriving business here. And it's so fun because the stuff you find here is so unusual, starting with the huge variety of containers that, that they have. And what I love is they've got them all congregated so that if your aesthetic is all this kind of glazed blue pottery or that kind of more bronze finish, kind of a slight bronzy brown over here, or they've got some aged metal containers. Stuart, can you show in the distance where they've got some agaves, some Mediterranean type plants? And I love it because it's all under, like the, it's all in a shady area under the shade of this lace bark elm, this golden lace bark elm. And it's just so fun. There's some, some of our friends from Encore Azalea. They've got those. I've seen some Southern Living plants over here. But Stuart, walk, walk this way. I'm still getting to the You're still, sorry, sorry. Where were the? Yeah, let, well, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna have to kind of come this way. And I'll show you all the different kind of pottery down in this area. Boy, we're up about 10 degrees over here. It we? did as soon as we got in out of the shade <laughs> and into the sun. And I love these old I love these old buildings. Oh yeah, it's real neat. I love that old, old brick. Yeah, it's such a cool, like, it's like a little old town shop in the middle of this. It yeah. is. Well, and you can kind of see how it was it, how it harkens back to the 30s and the 40s because of course my house was built in the 30s so we won't walk all the way down here Stuart because it's pretty brutally hot out here you can see little dot is parked next to one of the Calvert's trucks and so you can have compositions again commercial or residential and you can have compositions made and then they will take care of them. They'll come in, they'll make sure that they get enough light, that they are fed, that they're watered, and you don't have to basically do anything. Calvert's is turnkey and they'll come and they'll take care of just about everything. There is a pocket over here, Stuart, if you'll walk this way, 
and maybe as we walk you can see that there are some trellises they're, they've got a little bit of garden furniture, some wonderful, really large terracotta pots, concrete. And that reminds me, Stuart, that in our next live this coming Sunday, we're going to be giving away a garden bench. So uh, next Sunday at 2 o'clock on Linda Botter Live, we're going to be giving away a garden bench. So you guys want to make sure to, to tune in for that. And then over this way, because I really want to give you guys a feel for just the diversity of the type of containers they have that match just about any aesthetic you can imagine, whether it's contemporary, whether it's Mediterranean, industrial, English. You can see all of these dark slate gray ones. And by the way, I believe this is where Sydney got her pot, Stuart. Oh, okay. You know, that lives down the street, yeah. Sydney, and, Sydney and Tommy. I think they got their pots from here. In fact, I believe it's this shaped one. This one in the middle? Yeah, this one right here. Wow. But you can get all different finishes and, so. or all different shapes, but in the same finish so that everything kind of coordinates and looks cohesive and and not and kind of not too junky there's glazed white and i am i'm my mind is kind of going crazy i can't i can't wait till i figure out once i move into my next house what my aesthetic is going to be because i definitely know i'll be coming here for some really impactful statement making pottery. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, those giant normal looking ones. Yeah, aren't those it's incredible? Just super, like uh, exaggerated. I know, like on steroids. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, they're, you know, to get pots of this quality and for them to have this kind of inventory and selection that you cannot find anywhere else. Um, they're not going to be, I wouldn't say really inexpensive, but by the same token, just like a piece of furniture, if you're buying a huge pot like that that makes a statement, that's to me how I look at it as an investment. I just want to turn it into like a giant Easter, like giant eggs, giant like <laughs> Have a whole, just look uh, exaggerated. Yeah, have a whole, uh, yeah, giant be Jack of the Beanstalk around it. I, I just love the simplicity of the concrete and the terracotta. And then, probably because it's so hot, they don't have a lot of topiary in inventory, but they have a few things. And some of you were asking, I pointed out in one of my last videos where I showed the winners, some of the winners and the losers from this hot as the Dickens summer. Well, one of those was just a classic blue point juniper. In my garden, I've got it shaped into a ball, but here it's in a standard Christmas tree form. So if you've got a really hot western or southern exposure, this would be an incredible candidate. And then over here, they've got just a, just a bit of topiary Stewart, not a whole lot, but just a few things. Yeah, with all the balls, that's some kind of arborvita or juniper. It looks like there is an Italian cypress back in here. I spied some southern living plants. They've got some sunshine ligustrum back in here that's probably destined to become a topiary of sorts. And then they, they also have some other specimens that are kind of hidden in different locations, probably all seeking shade because it is just so, so, so hot. But I mean, look at this. If you have a really grand home, then this is where you would come for really grand planters that match the scale 
of whatever your landscape is or the scale of your home because they're just it's just hard to find things of, of this size and stature. Look at all the cool ones over there, Stuart, that have some glossiness and kind of a metallic sheen to them. Okay. And then quite often I'm asked, where can you get really, really large concrete saucers? and those that are in more of a low profile saucer shape and here is a good source for that so they have some that are massive that would look great on pilasters on certain kind of punctuation endpoints of a wall they would be wonderful but Stuart look look here I mean just some that's beveled really really unusual and then of course i just love the classic italian italian brown let me get out of the way but you can see the beveling on that and it comes in these large sizes but also in also in smaller sizes so stuart i think it's pretty hot out here you want to make a beeline for the front door let's do it Stuart, I'm going to stop here for a moment because we have some blessed shade. But more pottery up here. They've got palms. They, there's some hibiscus here. I imagine back in there, there might be some bird baths. There are different kind of, of weeping plants, just interesting plant profiles. Japanese maples. Again, their plant inventory is probably a little bit more meager than it normally would be since it's the end of the end of the growing season. Okay. Okay, let's look down this way. And if you're coming to Oklahoma City and you're here on a shopping expedition. Again, this little oasis is just tucked away from the Belle Isle yeah, Shopping Center. So you can see where Ulta is. There. There's Ulta, a Nordstrom rack that's over there, a Walmart, a Chili's. There you is, you, you almost can't even tell because this is just such a little hidden, such a, a little hidden wonderful oh, place down in here. Yeah. If you have more of an adobe, maybe Mexican, Spanish, Hispanic look, you've got these here. Um, more of the slate gray, buff colors. Look at this incredible. Look at this incredible bird bath. And also, it looks like it's also a fountain. Is it that tall? It is this tall. You can see down here, look, Stuart. It is that tall. Whoa. That is, that is incredible. Really incredible. So I think you can see what I mean about if you're looking for pots of a certain scale. Look at this gorgeous jade color over here. I am not normally someone who likes really glossy patina on things, but I have to say, this weathered turquoise, this patina really speaks to me. It's just beautiful. And then, Stuart, if you would, look at, the, just look at how beautiful this golden lace bark elm is. It is, it is just beautiful. And it looks like maybe it hasn't had too much winter damage. But it is a good, what do you say? 20 degrees cooler here in the shade, it's, Stuart. It, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, it's absolutely amazing. So there's two different entrances. They, they have a lot of plants indoors. I'm on the lookout for a couple of indoor plants, Stuart. Are you on the lookout for anything today? Possibly. You might be inspired once we get inside. Um, 
but they've got a selection of some outdoor plants here but really their strength lies in what's inside so Stuart come on in we're so excited Phoebe yes I want to introduce you to a friend of mine Via Carey, our creative coordinator. You guys, this is Phoebe, and, and she is mm -hmm. also a student, or was a student. You've graduated now? Yes, I graduated in May. In May, from OSU Horticultural Extension Center, and you're getting ready to maybe do a graduate study program? Yeah, I'm looking at grad programs right now, mostly out of state. I kind of want to work on um, like research and development for tropical houseplant type applications pretty incredible and but I, I think the degree you guys got from there is public public horticulture yes. is that that's what Carrie and and you already have she's about to finish up so show us the wonderland that you that you have here Stuart just do kind of a slow pan and then we'll go into this area that's kind of a workstation area and where some of the magic happens i guess yes that's right we've got all kinds of stuff always happening over here especially this is kind of where we stage everything where we make everything kind of like the movie magic of it all yeah the movie <laughs> magic i love that i love that lot you've got lots of orchids lots of bromeliads yes. it looks like oh yeah those are like two of our biggest interior scaping plants well, and the fact that you have such a breadth of plant selection, it can really accommodate any kind of exposure people have inside their homes. Definitely. Look at this, Stuart. Oh, yeah. Isn't it's this really incredible? Good. Wow. And it looks like those are just pots that are sitting in there, aren't they? Yeah, this is um, one of our wall planters where it's just, it's almost like shelves that are slanted. So it makes it really easy to switch the plants out. It kind of just depends yeah, on the Stuart, like, your you lighting. And... Can you see that? So it almost looks like a metal magazine rack. It really does. It's kind of the same vibe. It's like, you know, just for plants instead of paper. That is such a great idea. Okay, there's a take it home tip for you guys. If you are a metal worker, you can make this out of wood even. Oh, totally. Lots and of so, people DIY. And so these are just potted plants that just sit in here. I would have thought they were planted. And then you've tucked just in some Spanish moss to yeah. cover up the gaps. How clever is that? We use that Spanish moss on so much. It's actually an artificial Spanish moss made of like recycled shredded paper. And so we don't have to harvest live moss and it still gives that beautiful finished look. We make sure we have that on all of our interior scaping um, like setups. It really, really makes it Who nice. knew? Yeah. Who knew? It's yeah, crazy. and then you're not denuding the real stuff. Exactly. So this this area has looks like tropical plants, Z plants, palms. Um, what else do you have back here, Phoebe? Yeah. So we've got a lot of. Um, this is kind of where our dracaenas will be. We have all kinds of dracaenas. We have like the standard dracaena marginata, great interior plant. Can Same you, with can, the can you think everybody can hear her? Oh, okay, yeah, Stuart. Oh, okay, good. because well, you've got some big fans going here for yeah. air circulation. True. Excuse me for interrupting. You were oh, talking about the dracaenas. Yeah. So this, these right here are dracaena tarzans. They have a bit thicker of a leaf than the classic marginata. We've got them in standard as well as like kind of more multi-trunk. Uh, styles really great for like slightly lower light they still like a good amount of light as all trees do but yeah yeah we've got some quite a bit of variety when it comes to dracaenas more dracaenas oh, yeah now these these remind me of my my college days my oh, apartment yeah. living days I think everyone my age had one of these in their apartment <laughs> Stuart did you oh I might have a favorite <laughs> <laughs> I love it yeah, more marginatas. Ooh, this talk is... about this. Oh, yeah. So this is a bird of paradise. They're, um, you see them all over California and, you know, kind of the coasts. But they're also a really cool interior scaping plant because they don't need, like, a ton of light to just have foliar growth. And they may not flower while they're inside, but that's okay because they still have, like, just that gorgeous foliage. Yeah, I love it. It's so wow. pretty. They've been really popular this year. 
and that tropical look is is very popular. Now you were oh, yeah. you were saying that one of the most important things is providing not only adequate light but humidity. So what are some yeah. ways you can provide additional humidity in your home? Oh, there are definitely there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I have like a lot of people use like a cool mist vaporizer. I actually use a warm mist one because the water in Oklahoma and a lot of other areas too, it can be really minerally, like really hard water. Mm -hmm. And so when you do a cool mist one, it can kind of get dust everywhere almost. It makes like, it kind of releases those minerals in particulate form, but the warm mist also just puts out that much more humidity. It's, it's crazy. Wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> great, great tip. Yeah. Great tip, Stuart. Look, there's the mate to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is just spectacular. I love those. We've that got is some... spectacular. Yeah. And we've got more uh, palms back here. Yeah. <gasps> we've got some of these. We got, um, we have a lot of stuff in our south greenhouse, too. I don't know if I showed you that. Oh, you have a southern greenhouse it's back, back here. here. Oh, my gosh. Super nice. There's Stuart, all kinds of stuff. I have lust in my heart, but I guess <laughs> this already belongs to somebody else. We've got like six others in the south, and they're go they just came in the other day. Oh, my gosh. The jade Phil stump. Phil Clayton would go bananas over that. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I love those. They're so cool. This Never is really, really incredible. Yeah. So let's let's go back to <laughs> to the workstation. Oh, this one this one is interesting. You've got it almost espaliered. Yeah. To kind of separate the trunks. What a great idea! Isn't Another that take cool? at home tip. Yes, they come in like that from the nursery. They um, and then usually they're zip tied, and we we replace the zip ties with um, like little kind of just twist ties to make it look nicer. And they just grow and grow like that. It's really cool. Um, there's that flat weave style, and then there's like this more rounded kind of vortex like uh -huh. weave over there. Um, yeah, it can be done many different ways, and you can do it at home if you start young enough. Just kind of train them up like a bonsai. Yeah, and as I recall, dracaenas are pretty easy to take care of, are oh. they not? Oh yeah, they're super easy. They're yeah. a really easy plant to take care of. Yeah, I love the architectural quality. That would look yeah. great in a contemporary, oh, in yeah. a contemporary setting. It really, they look great in all of the interior scaping applications I've seen them in. Gorgeous. Really beautiful. And the other thing I love is that so many of these or like their new plant, even though I've seen them many times before, the way they are growing makes them all look like a different plant because so much of the very mature trunk is exposed. Oh yeah. These are an amazing hybrid. You, you almost never see them this big because it takes so long for them to grow like that. That one's like probably at least five or six years old yeah. when, by the time we get it. Um, Cause like you'll see the little ones and it takes them just forever, especially if you're just growing them inside. And these come from the nursery being grown full time. Um, that, and it just still takes that long. So these are, yeah. And, and they're so find. beautifully cared for. You know, yeah. the tips aren't brown. They've obviously had adequate humidity. And this is, in other words, this isn't just your big box store specimen. This is something really special. Yes. So, uh, true, true, true confessions. This is my source for whenever I I need live moss or green moss or anything yes. like that. They have. We have. All they kinds. are a moss source, a moss resource. So we they have. have all different kinds. Yeah. Here's like a little example. This is our moss man moss. We put it on orchids. We have like reindeer moss. We have reindeer moss in like all kinds of different colors. You can see like, you can get some really amazing like works of art truly with oh, wow. this. We use a lot of like sheet moss. Pretty sure this is some sheet moss. Or this is actually more shag. Just a different yeah, style this of is the shag. shag. shag yeah. yeah. <laughs> this shag. is some of the stuff. I love the earthy smell of it. Yeah. So what are the tips if you are using sheet moss in a container? What yeah. are the what what are the tips and the tricks to keeping it green? So basically, all of the moss that we get is a preserved moss. So it comes to us um, like just ready for display, and it has no uh, true like 
care and maintenance tips except to like avoid getting it wet unlike with live moss because it's preserved avoid getting it wet and keep it in like indirect light if you can um just to keep it from like getting faded by the sun uh-huh so it's like basically zero maintenance and it still gives that really realistic like biophilic quality to it you so know? If, if you're using a preserved moss no water but if you're using a live moss or something right then you would want to keep it hydrated correct that's true but you know what's crazy this is actually preserved too it just looks that real it's wow. so realistic looking. so does that mean that whenever you water the plant you have to just kind of lift up yeah. the mulch water it underneath and then tuck it back into place exactly you just kind of um yeah we just tell people like just peel it back a little bit give water. it a nice drink yeah. and then you can just replace that moss and then that's all you need to do well that is that is so good to know yeah. so from start to finish they can create um some kind of tablescape for you completely from scratch. They, you can get the container here or, or whatever. Yeah. But you were showing me earlier that it's an ongoing thing. So if you have a particular container that you like to always be on exhibition in a certain area of your house, yeah. then you can just bring the container back in when it starts flagging a little bit yeah. and then you guys will refresh the container. Exactly. We do a lot of that. Um, people bring their stuff in, their orchids have started to drop their blooms or the spikes have died back like that. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm here for my orchid maintenance. And then we just do it right up for them. And uh, we replace any moss. If it's yellow, we can replace air plants, give it a whole look, different look if they want to. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's and nice I would imagine some people probably change them seasonally. They do, you're right. And I, I love these, this Santaveria, this yeah. type of Santaveria. That is just so interesting. And They're did so I see cool. some baby ones over here? <gasps> yeah, you may have. This is the, um, yes, over here. This is one we use a lot because, as you know, all Santaverias are so easy to oh, take care so, of. Yeah. Or AKA mother in law's tongue. Yeah. But look at how tiny these are. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cute. They're so cool. This is the Santaveria fernwood. It's Burn somewhat one. new. Okay. Yeah. It's really cool. Good to know. Are you paying attention, Stuart? Yeah. Fernwood. And then you have a pretty large inventory of, of orchids, but the variety of containers that you have yeah. is just incredible. And the vignettes you put together are just so unique and have such character they just look like little miniature landscapes from hawaii or from the tropics or something like that yes that's definitely what we kind of aim for with a lot of our especially something like this we just did this one for a client this is one of those onyx boats and it can be kind of intimidating to come up with a design for these but like our ladies here who are the designers in the greenhouse techs, they've been doing this for so long. They always, it's like they can just envision what it's gonna look like and we can make, we can just make it happen with like all the preserved mosses and the live plants. And those sticks that you see here actually came from a tree on our property. I forget the species, but. It looks like a contorta, Harry Lauder's walking stick or, or it could be a witch hazel. But look at, you said this was onyx? It is, yeah, it's, it's carved onyx, just one piece. The oh, whole wow. thing. They're super pretty. Just a mini little, you know, a mini little landscape, but my goodness, the impact that would have on a sideboard oh, yeah. or a coffee table. So Phoebe, would you take us into then where people can select the plants for the oh. compositions you put together? Of course. So in here, this is our, um, we call this our main greenhouse. And it's got all kinds of like, um, this is kind of where our smaller stuff is, our, our tropicals that are on the, you know, on the smaller end from up until about 10 inches. Yeah. So many different kinds of yeah. ways to stage and display. Yes. Your plants and house plants are just so popular right now. Your business oh. must have. It's been crazy. We've had like the biggest 
like ever since the pandemic started, we have had the biggest retail year. We lost a bunch of um, maintenance accounts because no one was coming into, into the, the offices. Office. Yeah, but we like we were able to really stay afloat. This is what carried us. We had a meeting was the about residential. It. Yeah. That's wonderful. It's amazing. This is one of the things, Stuart, that's on my list. You may recall at my house, I have one of these that's larger. This is an Inming or Fabian Aurelia. I have one of these. And it, it needs a companion. It needs a sidekick. <laughs> it needs a little friend. So I think this <laughs> this is this is the one I want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this with me so I so nobody else will snag it. Yes. What do you think, Smart. Stuart? Smart? Yeah, you gotta you gotta make the claim. Yes. But You're there's really the problem is, and this is my question of the day for you guys, kind of hidden into the, in the in the mid sections of this video, is are you like me? And when you go plant shopping, it's just you spend so much time picking the one that you like the best, and you go back and forth and back and forth, only to end up where you began yes. with the one you saw first. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's kind of how it is. I do that. That's all kind time. of how it is with me. Yes, it's like that was the one. It jumped out at you for a reason. At it first. did. It's it was it was flagging me down. This is more. My large one isn't quite that large, mm. but it's more of more of that scale. Yeah, those are. They just add so much gorgeous texture. You know, that uh -huh. scale that it has just really adds to the space. It's great. So fun. you have lots and lots of bromeliads as well as orchids to add some color punch some golden pothos what would you say are your most popular oh. sellers as for color people always love the bromeliads and we get so many colors in and, and even so many shapes like here's some neo regalia bromeliads same care as the guzmania which are the taller ones but they just they have like that shorter squattier look they add so much to a space uh, so much color they last for months um so those are an awesome choice people love those what are the time. what are the care tips for a bromeliad if you're growing them indoors yeah so bromeliads don't need a ton of direct light they can really go with some indirect light and be just fine um they also won't fret if you forget to water them every now and again because their leaves are so thick and um just kind of like fleshy almost so it's um you can go about, I, I typically recommend every 10 to 14 days, give it a good drink or just kind of And do you whatever. water it at the base? Do you, yeah. you sometimes see water that has settled into the reservoir right. of the top of it. In the wild, it's okay for that water to get in there, but actually when you're growing them like this, um, kind of in captivity almost. If you're yeah. growing them like that, yeah. <laughs> I love that, in captivity. in captivity. That is, that is, I love that. That is great. Oh, but yeah, you wanna <laughs> avoid getting water in the center because um, the lack of airflow that you get inside, it can lead to crown rot okay. in them. So you wanna definitely water along the base. And it's easy to accidentally get it in there, but yeah, just yeah, make sure you can like shake it out. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. And so what are what are all these beauties over here? Oh yes, the shipment just came in yesterday from Florida. So these are my personal favorite. I'm a philodendron fanatic, as are lots of people right now. It's kind of the, the trend that's staying. So these are moonlight philodendrons, and these are Macaulay's finale philodendrons. They're they're related. They were actually bred by the same man in the 70s. So R. Michael, moonlights over here? Yes. Yeah. Moonlights and Macaulay's finale. And they're low yeah. light plants, relatively low light, are they not? They um, they can handle lower light, but uh, especially with these, with like this red color, you're gonna get better color the higher the light, light. is. Yeah, I have um, one of each and I have them near my west window. Really? Like, yeah, and um, they've adapted really well to it. They're very happy. They put out new leaves all the time. And again, probably just make sure you provide them with humidity by yeah. setting them on a, a tray of gravel or one of your your warm mist humidifiers. Yeah. Like the kind when you have a cold, basically. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and another little tip is, and I'm sure a lot of plant fans, this is gonna be kind of um, 
it's something they won't even need to change, is just putting your plants close together. It actually helps because when they respire, they're just kind of like having that little area of higher relative humidity in the room when they're near each other. So that's helping them to have their little friends. And yeah, yeah. It's also like, oh, my plants are all really close together because I have so many. Well, that's actually a good thing. So. They're, they're very social. <laughs> they they're are. very social creatures. <laughs> very true. You've got, it looks like some, some all different kinds of succulents and oh, echeveria. Yes. And very popular too. People love More them. crotons and cacti. Yes. Oh, everyone has just loved the succulents. These. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's like, that trend started years and years ago, almost like 10 years ago. And people are still just, I mean, they've just come out with so many types, so many colors and um, like just shapes and textures. The colors are just amazing. Yeah. To and me. there's, it's such a seductive thing. You have one and then you want another one. So exactly. if somebody is starting a little collection like this, how frequently should they be watering their succulents? So I would say, so basically succulents need really bright light. And so if they're getting enough light, you can water them more regularly. You can, like if they're, basically if they're outside, you can water them about once a week. But in an inside kind of situation, like as a house plant, um, I would say about every two to three weeks. And a good way to check is just by giving the leaves a little feel, giving them a little squeeze and checking the bottom ones and, um, like that's what I tell people with these pearls, just to they're, see if they're kind of squishier than any And, and if, so this one, for so example, feels. Looking away, so. Okay, so, so this one, you were saying you feel the bottom, the lower leaves. So, for example, feel that one, and it's kind of squishy. Yeah. Feels a little limp. Does that mean it? It Too much or that needs watering. Does that mean that that leaf is just old and is going to expire soon? Kind of. It can be all of those things yeah. which is the tricky part with you know the whole uh thing of oh, a leaf is turning yellow it could mean all these contradicting uh -huh. things yeah. but with the succulents yeah it's like it can mean like if kind of all the leaves are getting kind of softer that means it's thirsty but if you're seeing bottom leaves fall off or wither away like that um it can especially if you're seeing it kind of when you first get the plant it could just be the plant adjusting to its mm -hmm. new um kind of environment too yeah. so it's not um typically like a super big problem yeah. It'll or maybe out. when you watered it it was too close to the moisture for too long or, yeah. or or something it could be all kinds of things so here's some of all of these other little cutie pies over here so to give you a price point on some of these my guy is 16.95 this guy is 22 yeah. um, so the all different you've got different price points here and different scale of plants so that it just depending on what size you need for your particular indoor space yeah you can accommodate Definitely. Isn't that great? Those are Sansevieria whale fin. They're almost whale fin. Yes. What a great name! Aren't they amazing? They're just so big and beautiful. Very, very. Popular. You could have a Sansevieria theater, a whole really display of yeah. nothing but different varieties of Sansevieria, which would be so incredible, yeah. and so low maintenance and low light and just. Oh yeah, this is a really popular, like, um, if someone has like a house plant, um, it's either probably a golden pothos or a snake yeah. plant, because they're just so easy and, and so cool and they really do And a lot indestructible. Of, and yes. you don't even have to repot them, they kind of like being pot bound. It's true, yeah. They prefer that as to um, being in a bigger pot where they can possibly get root rot, because they're kind of a succulent. I love this. I, I have. I had so many of these when I was in an apartment and did, doing more indoor gardening than I, now I do more outdoor gardening, but. Right. Yeah, those ponytails. We have like the biggest ones I've seen. We had some that were like, they filled the pot. They're so big. People are like, oh, I've never seen, like we get, um, we have these two money trees. I think they're back in the South greenhouse. And like, you know, you always see them at like Sprouts or like Walmart uh -huh. and they're like the braided trunk. Right. But we have some that are like this tall. And it's crazy. And again, the quality and the care and the and the mm -hmm. all of the careful attention that is given to all of these makes the quality of your plants 
really incomparable. Those are prayer plants. What's really cool about those is it, yeah, they literally look like they're painted. At nighttime, the leaves close up like hands praying, and that's why they're called prayer plants. They're gorgeous. I love them. They like a lot of water. But yeah, we always, um, we tell people we take a lot of pride in our quality because at the big box stores, a lot of them use this shipping way where they, um, they kind of get the plants in and they don't pay, the company that provides them doesn't get paid until they're sold. So the company, the big box store, doesn't have a lot of incentive to keep the plants healthy and happy. Yeah. But us, it just means a lot to us to right. source top quality stuff and just keep it, um, just keep it really and happy. Keep it tended. Does this grow sideways? Yeah, that's a staghorn yeah, fern. Have you, are you familiar with staghorn oh. ferns? Oh. Aren't they wonderful? Oh, that's a fern. So these are really popular for a while. They, st I think they still are. Yeah, they're, um, there's one at TLC that's like this big. Yeah, I, I think Martha Stewart had a huge collection of those. I think she did. I think I've seen pictures. Oh my gosh, her garden's amazing. Ooh, it's getting cooler in this direction. Ah. Uh, yeah, we keep our orchids right there by the cooling cells. Oh, this is a big money tree. This is one of the ones. You can see that big braided trunk. Yes. It's gorgeous. Yes. It's so cool. Yeah. Yes. I had that and chiffaleras and Yeah. And the way you've got things styled and staged is so fun. Yeah, we try to give people some ideas. Sometimes yeah. people will be like, I want this whole thing right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, many a time have I come here and just shopped for ideas. Yes. In addition to plants. Now I have one of these, Stuart, which is also an Aurelia, but looks completely different than this form. Yeah. That's the same plant. Mm -hmm. It's the same plant, but it's got this distinctive trunk, but it looks completely different. And then I am eyeing some of your faux bois, because I need some more faux bois pots for my my little blue spru or um, uh, blue point juniper forest that I'm creating with all the volunteers. I do. I I need some more faux bois, so I may have to I may have to treat myself, and I I also am lusting after this green concrete polka dot whatever it is bowl down there love that yeah we get the coolest containers in. we kind of hand pick from various companies uh -huh. to try to see which ones would look the best with like all kinds of different interiors i was about to ask you how these ones had such pretty blue and yellow <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. oh that is that is lots of genetics Stuart. that is what do they have to do to make that happen lots, the ribbon gene <laughs> lots of genetics okay so speaking of containers and by the way i've gotten i've gotten so many gifts from people from here that kept, because they'll they'll buy me pots in different containers mm -hmm. let's go in this section here so this is our showroom So this right here is our showroom. We've got, um, this is the place to go to find like smaller interior pots. And if you wanna like get an arrangement made like, you know, from the ground up here, this is the place to do it. We've got all kinds of styles. They're kind of sorted by style um, and color. But yeah, these are all our pretty indoor ones. So many finishes and textures and yeah. uh, it's got a just, you, you feel like you're taking a little trip through the Orient or through Malaysia or something like that because there's just such a different, so many different textures and natural finishes and organic material, great baskets. That's my favorite. That turtle, it, there, I thought you liked the octopus. All of them. <laughs> there's so much to just appreciate. The this is one of my favorites right here. People are loving like the kind of, almost oh, like yeah. the bohemian vibe. Yeah, I can see that very yeah. much, that that bohemian vibe. Yes, we have all kinds of stuff like that going on here. Um, tons of baskets, um, tons of like kind of more metallic and contemporary containers, um, classic ones, really you name it, and we can make it work for your space. We've also got 
crystals. We like to add these to our arrangements as well as we just have them a la carte. I did notice some outside. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is you, you cater to such a broad demographic because you've got so many young people who love houseplants for their apartments, but you've got a lot of older people that entertain a lot and want you to put together different compositions for them with the orchids and things of that nature. So you really cater to a quite diverse clientele. It's true. We've seen a ton of younger people, like, you know, kind of young urban professional crowd, as well. oh, even teenagers too. Look at, oh, I am coveting this, this star pod stock. That is incredible. We get all kinds of really amazing, like botanicals in. Mm -hmm. So cool. Well, I can tell that I could get into great, great trouble here. <laughs> so could you, Stuart. Almost anyone could get into great trouble. Oh, yeah. People say it's like, oh, it's dangerous for me I, to be it, in here. It is dangerous. <laughs> it is dangerous. It's so funny. Come with a fat pocketbook. <laughs> People always say, they're like, I came in here when I knew I didn't have much time so I could limit myself. And <laughs> yes, I yes, so, so I came in for one thing and I left with many yes. more. And speaking of leaving, I think we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to call it quits, Stuart. This was just amazing, Phoebe. Thank you so much oh, for course. your graciousness for yes. the tour of oh, this place. It was so nice and, to And I out. think you're gonna help me out in my garden a little bit. Oh, I'm always available, I, you know, I love gardens and plants it's my whole thing well, well <laughs> it's I, our whole thing i'm so glad that carrie introduced us and it is just so comforting to know that a place like this is literally minutes from my house not only with the wonderful inventory of containers and plants that they have but also with the depth and breadth of knowledge that all of you can provide for the care and maintenance of these beauties thank you so much you're so welcome linda it was so nice to meet you we'll be back yes awesome well, if you've held on this long, this is my out and about outfit of the day. My John Lennon inspired sunglasses came from Forever 21, I believe. My top is embroidered. It's a Goodwill find. My britches came from Forever 21. I just got these Birkenstock inspired sandals. They're actually Esprit and I got these at Nordstrom Rack. I love that color of brown leather which coordinates, don't you think, Stuart? Coordinates well with my wicker bag. I got this online and I will put a link if we remember, Stuart. And then let's see my earrings. Oh, these are just fun earrings that I got at a pop-up shop here in Oklahoma City somewhere. Can't remember the name of it. And, oh, let's see, my, my jewelry comes from I cannot remember where. I've had both of these things, sure. both of these pieces. They, they you did from I don't yeah, know where yeah, I can't remember where that. yeah this might have come from TJ Maxx I can't remember so there you go there is my outfit of the day <laughs>